Hi, I'm Rajan Anandan. I'm a partner with Peak 15 Partners. I think millennial founders don't want to listen to anybody else. I'm just getting started. As an investor, how do you measure today founders or CEOs on success? Well, it's really very simple. It boils down to performance. Are you able to deliver consistent high performance? And are you able to build a team that's high caliber, that's fully charged up, and that wants to really continue to reimagine the business? Those are the two things that matter. And that's what you know every CEO and every leader gets measured on. One lesson you learned each from McKinsey, Dell, Microsoft, Google. McKinsey was very simple. Was strategy is super important. Dell was execution is more important than strategy. Microsoft was consistent execution beats everything else. And Google was when your industry is changing dramatically, execution by itself leads you only so far. You got to reimagine and reinvent your company. What's the one leadership practice you think is most unused or underutilized? Just saying thank you. We have a fair sense of what AI is going to do to jobs and workflows. What do you think it's going to do to leaders and leadership? It's going to make leaders much more productive if you know it how to use it well. What do you think Indian founders are exporting to the world today on leadership? Nothing. Indians are among the best CEOs of global tech companies. Microsoft, Google, Adobe, IBM, Visa, and the list goes on. But Indian founders are not exporting leadership less. Indian startup founders are not exporting leadership lessons yet. How does a leader become a true leader of people? You have to actually lead. The only way you learn to lead is to lead. And the way that you know that you're leading well is your delivering results consistently and you have a team that's motivated and charged up. It's easy to do one or the other. You could actually deliver results with a team that's not particularly motivated, charged up, or you could have a motivated and charged up team that actually where your results aren't very good. You know you're a great leader when you've got a team that's delivering consistently at very high performing levels and they're charged up about doing what they do. How can Indian entrepreneurs face giant companies? Basically, as a founder, your most important thing when it comes to leadership is for you to evolve as a leadership, as a leader, right? When you start up, you've got two people, and you, then you get to 10 people, all you have to do is find product market fit. Once you find product market fit, you start scaling, you got to go from one to 10, then you go from 10 to 100. Each of those phases require different types of leadership, right? Leading a company with 10 people is very different to leading a company with a thousand people and it's certainly very different to leading a company with 10,000 people. I think the most important thing is to learn and evolve. And if you actually don't like leading, because a lot of founders may actually decide they don't want to lead a 10,000 person company, then find a professional CEO who can step in and run the company. What is the right time or the ideal time for Indian founders to bring in a CEO? There's no ideal time. What you shouldn't do it is before you have product market fit. A CEO can't help you find product market fit. Only founders can help you find product market fit. Ideally, you want to just find product market fit and at least get from one to 10. Because by that point, you built the kind of company that you think it should be. But beyond that, you know, you have to, you know, we have a saying, one of our partners is saying that says every year, a founder should ask themselves, am I the best person to run this company and take it to the next level? If the answer to that is no, then it might be time to explore whether you want to bring somebody else who's actually been there and done that to run the company. Most important thing is to be very clear on what the roles and responsibilities are. If the founder is still with the company, most, most many times they are, and that's actually a good thing. What is the founder going to do or the founder is going to do? What are their roles and responsibilities and what is the role and responsibilities of the CEO? Lack of role clarity is what generally leads to professional not just CEOs, but professional leaders or professional managers who join startups do not work out because, you know, it's not very clear exactly what they need to need to get done. And it's very important for founders to empower a professional CEO and give them lots of space to do what they need to do because they were brought in to run a company. Two misconceptions about leadership that you'd like to clarify. There are natural born leaders and there's a certain way to lead. There's no one right way to lead, right? There are many different ways to lead. One amazing thing I learned from Sundar Pichai at Google is you can deliver extraordinary results and also be loved by your team. Now, of course, companies go through different phases, but the eight years I was there, that was one of my biggest lessons at Google from Sundar. What's the most common career advice that you've received that you disagree with? You've got to take a lot of risk. 
I think the harder the job, the lower the probability that you're going to succeed. The more important is that you take it because, you know, the way you learn and develop faster is just to stretch like big time, big time stretch. And that's not generally advised because there's a high probability that you, it won't work. Three must-have traits in leadership that Rajan looks for. Yeah, I think one is vision, right? You've got to have a vision of where you want to take, uh, take your business. You've got to be able to be, build great teams, right? You have an eye for talent. Can you attract great talent? And third is execution. Vision without execution doesn't lead you anywhere. So can you roll up your sleeves, get the operating rhythm, rhythms in place, just drive execution like it's never been driven before. Rajan's leadership style in three words. I like big ideas. I like to empower teams and I like to really hold teams and myself accountable. So I'm a big believer in OKRs, objectives and key results, because it gives you a framework and an approach in which you can be very clear on what you want to get done as a team, but at the same time, you can empower your teams tremendously and then still hold them accountable. What's the biggest risk you've taken as a leader and why? I haven't taken it yet. It's coming soon. What's the one thing you discovered pretty late about leading people? You know, when I went from McKinsey to Dell, I went from leading small teams at McKinsey to my first operating role at Dell. I had thousands of team members because I was leading a large global offshore operation. And my big lesson there was as a leader, your role is not to come up with the answers. Your role is to ask the right questions and empower your teams to come up with the right answers. Do you have a favorite failure of yours? What did it teach you? I have more failures than I can ever imagine. I think the most important thing is to fail a lot because you learn the most from failing. The hardest business challenge you ever confronted, what did you do and what can we learn from it? Yeah, the hardest business challenge is how do you do large-scale restructurings? Both at Dell as well as Microsoft, I had to do large-scale restructurings. Dell was bigger than Microsoft. It's very, very difficult to let team members that you work with go because of business reasons, right? And I think uh, that's something that leaders have to learn because there are going to be points in time where you're going to have to make very, very difficult decisions. And the most difficult decisions are always the ones that are tied to people and it's the team. Rajan, how do you suggest leaders go about managing change in an organization? You know when you need to change, you know when the business needs to change, just go do it. Because most leaders, they procrastinate and procrastinate is the worst thing you can do when you know you need to change. How does Rajan Anandan give feedback? Direct, super direct. When faced with two equally qualified candidates, how do you determine who to pick? Energy. Energy is a force multiplier. Integrity. Absolutely cannot compromise. What are you most cautious about when it comes to people? You know, people always say they want to do the right thing, but are always driven by things that are not visible at the surface. So you have to get to know them and you have to really understand what's important to them because eventually that's what's going to drive what they do. What can Rajan get better at at his job? I want to be get better at investing. I've been doing this for four years and I'm just getting started. How does Rajan manage millennial founders? I think millennial founders don't want to listen to anybody else. They want to discover for themselves what's right, what's wrong, what's the right way to do it. They want to make the mistakes themselves. So you can guide them, but to imagine that they would actually listen to you is probably not something you should assume. Who's been the greatest influence on you as a leader and what have they taught you? Right out of university, I joined McKinsey. And there were several partners at McKinsey who had an extraordinary impact on me. In India, Ranjit Pandit, Tino Puri. In the US, Steve Coley, Mark McGrath. I think I learned how to think big, um, what it really means to serve clients deeply, how to say no, how to do the right thing even when it's not and it's very difficult. At Dell, I reported again some terrific leaders. Well, firstly, I worked for Michael. I think I learned how to execute from Michael. His extraordinary execution, attention to detail. Wake up every Monday morning and you do the exact same thing. And that's what it takes to scale a company. Bert Quintana on how to manage large operating teams spread across all over the world. I think at Microsoft, you know, I learned uh, the importance of consistent performance. It's it's not terribly hard to deliver four quarters of exceptional performance, but to do it the fifth quarter, the sixth quarter, the seventh quarter, the eighth quarter, the ninth quarter, the tenth quarter, very hard. Uh, and at Google, it was really the power of thinking big. 10x, not 10%. Started with Larry Page, then went to Nikesh Arora, and then every other leader that I worked with, including, of course, Sundar Pichai. What's the most useful leadership advice you ever received? I'm a big believer in 360-degree feedback. 
and 360 degree feedback is the most one of the most important things you can do as a leader because your entire team will give you feedback and if you've got a culture where people feel comfortable giving feedback you're always going to hear things that are unexpected that are going to make you cringe and most importantly though if you listen to it and act on it are going to make you better what does rajan generally seek advice on and who does he go to so i'm always looking to learn about what are the new trends in the market, what's what's likely to be big, what's likely not to be big. And then when we meet founders, you know, we're trying to assess, you know, is this the kind of founder that has the insights, the capability, the endurance, perseverance to stay at it for 10, 15, 20 years and build a large company. Name a leader from a different space that you've been looking up to recently. Look, I'm a huge fan of political leaders who've been very successful. Lee Kuan Yew, I've read all the books on Lee Kuan Yew. Huge fan of what, you know, Singapore did over a period of 30, 40, 30, 40 years. So I read a lot of biographies. I think those are very, very insightful about what makes people who they are. So if you were in my seat and could put anybody in that seat, who would it be and what would you ask them? Malala, what gives us so much courage? What's the one thing that you learned from Michael Dell, Sundar Pichai and Steve Barmer? Look, Michael Dell was execution. What it takes to drive, lead, world-class execution. It's extraordinary attention to detail. It's rigor that you can't imagine. And it's just staying with it and sticking with it. And look at what he's done. Took a company public, took it private, and look at what he's done since then. Steve Ballmer was just energy. Energy is a superpower. It's a force multiplier. And Ballmer was just phenomenal energy, right? He could motivate two people and he could motivate 100,000 people. Going to the Microsoft annual conference where Bomber was on stage, man, there was nothing like it on the planet. And with Sundar Pichai, look, treat everybody else the way you'd like to be treated. Sundar, everybody treated everybody just exceptionally well. Leadership lessons to avoid from your experiences of Zilingo, Bharat Bay and Trell. Look, the most important thing is you have to do the right thing. When you see wrongdoing, that's what our firm has done. We have taken action when we've seen wrongdoing. It's easy not to, but it's absolutely the wrong thing to do because what do you stand for? You stand for doing the right thing. We've had a few unfortunate situations where we've seen wrongdoing, we've investigated, and when we found wrongdoing, we've taken action and we will consistently do that because that is a core value that we have. One thing you've learned never to do as a CEO? Never say never. One thing you've learned always to do as a leader? Say thank you. One message as a leader for people who are worried about AI? Learn what you're most afraid of. One thing you wish people knew more about you? I'm an introvert. A secret vice? Ice cream. When in doubt, Rajan Anandan. Watchers news. Rajan's most prized personal possession is? My family. Job you secretly wanted but didn't get? Being in politics. Three people on Rajan's list of best upcoming Indian startup founders. Too many. One thing in your job that you can get better at? Investing. Crypto or climate tech? Climate. Your Peak 15 sponsored Shark Tank jury would look like? Well, Peak 15 would not sponsor Shark Tank. Rajan's favorite workday time waster is? Emails. One Indian investor you really admire, VC or P? All my partners, they're all 100x better than I am. Three most common VC investing blind spots. Looking for comps, who's done it before. Not being able to see 10 to 15 years out. And third, getting too enamored by momentum. Rajan's three most commonly used apps. WhatsApp, YouTube, Netflix. Banter about Rajan between Shalendra and Mohit and Drink. You'd have to ask them. One pet peeve that your wife and founders would all agree about you. Eternally optimistic. Clippers game with Steve Barmer, India Park match with Sundar Pichai, or drinks at your favorite rooftop bar with Shahrukh Khan. Rooftop bar with anyone. Rajan, if you had a gigantic billboard out there and could put a message to millions, what would it be? Live every day like it's the very last day you're ever going to be alive. As India moves from an economy 3.5 trillion of GDP to 5 trillion and then to 10 trillion, we're going to create the world's most interesting companies. There are going to be many things that are going to come together to create those companies, but the most important aspect will be leadership. And I'm so excited about Kunba because if you want to be a great leader, this is where you got to be. Are we done? Awesome. There we go. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs>